questions. Okay, you are set, Jason, and I'm going to, I think Martha's already a co-host. Um, so today we're talking about um, Canvas and getting ready to transition to a new learning management system here at Plymouth State. So we're welcoming Jason Ninos to uh, give us an overview. So with that, off you go, Jason. All right. So yeah, we're here to talk about Canvas. Um, you can see I already have it opened up. Uh, the link to get to PSU's instance of Canvas is mycourses.plymouth.edu. Uh, we are working on getting that into the My, My Plymouth uh, website. So you'll be able to launch from there. Right now, the only way to get to it is going through the actual um, link that I just put in the chat. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It does work with your single sign-on. So you just sign in like normal. Um, right now, it's at its generic looking colors. We will get PSU looking colors here in the near future. We just started working on the sign-off for the um, for the branding on it to make it look like it actually belongs to PSU. Um, so once you log in, you have this um, dashboard right here that has any courses that you're um, involved in in the um, in either as a student or an instructor. So I'm going to jump into one of my courses here. And so in this course here, you can see it starts off pretty blank. Um, so you over on the is left that, hand side. Yes, hold Jason, on. Let me that, talk to my wife. Okay. No, I was just making sure it was you and I, I couldn't find anyone else to mute. It's not a problem. It's not loud. Um, <laughs> sorry, we had conflicting schedules at the moment. So I know exactly how it goes. Don't worry about it. Um, so on the left hand side here, you have your, <laughs> sorry. You on the left hand side here, you have your navigation. Um, you start off with the homepage. Um, by default, the homepage is on your module is on your modules, which is pretty similar to what Moodle has at the moment with the sections. Um, and so we're going to recommend that you still funnel everybody in through the sections area uh, through the modules area, because um, you can see here that you have assignments, pages, files, out quizzes, and so the thing that's slightly different from Canvas from Moodle is that in Canvas, when I make a page, it doesn't always, you know, I can put into the modules area, but if I delete it from the module area, it doesn't stay in the module, uh, it stays in the, it deletes from the module area, but I can re-find it in the pages. Whereas in Moodle, when you deleted something from the section, it was gone completely from your course. And we'll kind of kind of talk about that more in depth as I, as I move forward. But really, your module is your main area where you organize your course materials. So we have the welcome to co my courses or welcome to Canvas. And if I want to add a new module, I click on module. And you can give your module name. I'm going to call it module one. And we really recommend calling it module one or week one or something like that. Um, quite often, PSU professors will call it, you know, week one, January 25th through February 2nd, we highly recommend you don't put dates anymore. Um, one of the nice things about Canvas, it makes it really easy to port things over from one semester to another, and will automatically change the due dates when you port from one semester to another. And so to make it slightly easier on you, we generally don't recommend putting the dates, but keep it slightly generic, module one, module two, so on and so forth, or week one, a week two, so on and so forth. Um, you have a lock until, so if you don't want your students to access this material until a certain date, you can lock it. And I can say lock until December 2nd or something like that, and they will see it, but they wouldn't be able to access anything within it. So if I click on my add a module, I have a module where I can start organizing my course material. Um, to add things to this module, I click on the plus sign right here, and then I get the option to add an assignment, quiz, file, page, discussion, text header, external URL, and external tool. So we're going to start with kind of your base thing, a page. Um, and the page is the equivalent uh, as the equivalent of what you guys, what PSU would use a label for, basically putting information or putting content in there. So if I do a page and I do, 
a new page and I'm gonna call it module one introduction. And I click on add item. And so now I have this module one introduction and I can click into it and I have a blank page. So then I can click edit. And so now here I have a rich content editor. Um, the nice thing about Canvas is the same all throughout the, um, all throughout Canvas. So I can say, welcome to module one, please read the syllabus and the week of module, I can totally type one reading. So you have your standard stuff, your font size, color, everything like that. Um, if you wanna get to the HTML, you can you know, get to the HTML that way. Um, one of the things I really wanna emphasize though, that I really love about Canvas is the internal navigation linking that you can do. And so, hey, welcome to module one. Please read the syllabus. Well, Mo Canvas has a syllabus area that we'll talk about in a second. But what I can do is if I click on this links button here, I can click on course links and I can link directly to that area. So I wanna link on the course navigation to the syllabus. So then once I click save, that becomes an active, an active hyperlink and I click to it and it takes me to the syllabus area of my course. Um, so we really encourage like using that navigation, using those, using the things to make it slightly easier for your students to get around. Um, now that we're at the syllabus, let's go ahead and talk about this. So you have your syllabus area where you can easily put your syllabus in and your students know where to go and where to get it. So if I click on edit, I can either paste my syllabus in here or you'll notice right here, we have a Microsoft Office 365 link. I can, if I have my syllabus in my 360, in my OneDrive or 365, let's say, you know, hey, files. Yes, we're gonna call that my syllabus, even though it's my fantasy football draft from 2019. I can link directly to that and my students can then click it to actually access it. The other thing you'll notice is that in the course summary here, uh, right now it's blank, but as we add assignments or quizzes or discussion forums that are have due dates on them, this is gonna populate. And so your students will be able to see what assignments they have in the course. And then if you wait your assignments, your course, you know, it shows your waiting scale here. And then you have a nice little calendar here that will populate with squares as things, um, as you put assignments into your course. So I'm gonna stop there, any questions so far? Okay. So let's hop back into my modules area. So we have my module one, we have the introduction. Let's add an assignment so we can start talking about what that would look like. So once again, I hit the plus sign, I have an assignment. I'm gonna say new assignment, I'll call it module one, reflection. Makes sense. Click on add item and I can hop into it and click on edit. And I can say, please write a 500 word reflection on what you learned from this module. So then I have, how many points is this worth? Let's make it worth 10. The assignment group right now I only have one default assignments, but if I want to do something else like um, so I have my assignment weightings, I can add another group. How is it going to be displayed? Um, submission type. So I want them to submit this online. And then I have all these options here is a text entry, a website URL, media recordings or a file upload. Nine times out of 10, you'll probably use a file upload. And then I'm gonna restrict the file upload type and I only want docx, don't want any Apple pages. How many times can I upload, uh, how many times can a student submit? I can leave it as unlimited or give them a limited amount. Group assignments, if you wanna do that, 
peer review if you want to do that. And then you have um, assigned to and the due dates. And one of the really nice things about Canvas is that let's say I want to assign to different people. So I can do everyone else. And then if I had students here, I would see my list of students. And let's say, you know, Robin needs an extension for accommodations. And so I can say it's a sign for Robin or for everyone else on December 3rd. And this one person on December 4th is when it's due. Uh, Jason, can you make sure you're looking at the chat too? Yep. Do you see those new ones? Got them. I will address them in a minute. Um, so going back to some of those questions, um, you can't really do a whole lot of um, scale base. You have complete, incomplete um, for display grade as, um, but there's not really as much as the scale base like check, check minus um, that we're used to in in, Cam, uh, in Moodle. Um, yes, sorry, Amy. Um, that's how I actually did. There's no way to move the grade book away from points. No, um, and really, uh, so Kathy asks, there's no way to move the grade book away from points. Not really. And in Moodle, they were actually points based too. Even if you did a you know complete incomplete, it converted it into points and it's worth two points down. It was worth um, you know two points or zero points if you completed or incompleted. Can you change the weight to zero? Um, that would be the equivalent of checking this box here. Do not count this assignment towards the final grade. So you can, you know, give it points, but not have it count towards the final grade. So in, in Moodle, the way that I dealt with that was I hid all of the totaling, all of the percentages, all of that stuff from the grade book so that all students saw was complete or incomplete. Can you do that? Um, I'll have to check. I don't, I'm not 100% sure if you can hide the total uh, individual columns in the grade book. I wouldn't say no, but we'll check. Um, we can check here later. All right. Um, Amy, I'm not going to go down the um, peer review rabbit hole today. Um, but if you want, we can, um, you be on the lookout. We do offer trainings on these, on different instance, uh, parts of Canvas, and we can um, definitely talk about that at a later time. Okay, thanks. Sorry, it just, <laughs> no, it's, it, good. It's, it's a rabbit hole to go down. Avoid it. <laughs> yes. All right, so now that I'm done, I can click the save or save and publish, and we'll talk about the differences here in a minute. So now I have my assignment and what, you know, my general assignment. And so if I go to my modules here, I can see I have my module one, my module one introduction and my module one reflection. Um, if I go to settings over here on my course navigation, one of the options I do have is going into student view. So if I click student view, I go into and I see the course what it looks like from a student perspective. You can see all the other things um, are hidden now. Um, they basically have the home screen and the modules. And one of the things in which in this case are the, are the exact same thing. But one of the things you'll notice is that the module one that we worked on is not there. And that's because we haven't published it. So if I go back into my regular view, so if I leave student view, you'll notice over on here on the right, there's these little buttons either a circle with a slash or a green check mark. And that tells you if something's published or unpublished. So if I publish these two items, my page and my assignment, and I go back into my student view, one of the things you'll still notice is that module one isn't there because I didn't publish that. So even if things are published within the module, if my module's not published, it's not there and it won't be visible to students. So once again, if I go back in my settings and go into student view, I'd now see my module one because it's published. And then you can see from the student's perspective, they have this nice little to do, hey, you have your module one reflection that's due on December 4th. 
uh, if they go to the syllabus, like we talked about here, you can see, hey, the course summary list module one reflection that's due on Friday, December 4th. And there's a box for that on the uh, on my calendar. So if I leave student view and we've I've pointed this out, if you look over on your course navigation, you have these different things with, uh, with the eyes that crossed out, meaning it's uh, disabled or not visible to students or that there's no content and not visible to students. Like I said, generally we recommend keeping all these things um, not visible to students um, and just putting all your assignments and everything into the modules area. Um, one thing that you will have to move up as we have it enabled now is I, if I go to my settings and navigation, I can change my navigation and add Zoom, which is what you're going to want to do, or I think we'll set it up so it's up by uh, it's in the navigation by default. And I, you'll notice that assignments, pages, files, all those things are below this um, divide here because I drag them down here to hide them from students. So if I click Save, I can then go to Zoom and it's accessible to myself or my students and it links to my Zoom account. So then I can schedule a meeting here and I'm gonna do this and I'll make it a reoccurring meeting that occurs no fixed time. And the nice thing about this now is if I click save in my Canvas course, there is specific meeting for my students. So I would click start or my students would click join and that's my meeting ID for my Zoom for, uh, for Zoom. So Zoom and Canvas has a nice LTI integration that you make the link and it's, this link is uh, usable for your course. And you can see, um, you know, I can check that box, show my course meetings only, or otherwise I can have my personal meeting room. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, actually, yep. I, I have a question. So from, I, I guess I'm not really quite understanding when you say hide the assignments area, the relationship between that and what you showed us with that course to do list and the stuff on the calendar, like what I, I'm, I, I can't yep. even ask a question about it because I just don't have the mental yep. framework for it yet. To and I, forgot to, I forgot to show you a key thing and I'll show you that right now. So I have this assignment, my module one reflection. It's in my modules area. It's in my assignments area also. If I go to my assignments, I can see my module one reflection. Here's the key, here's one of the key differences from Canvas to Moodle. In Moodle, this is like the equivalent of the of your sections in Moodle, the modules area. In Moodle, when you deleted it, it was gone from the course. Whereas right now, if I click on my options here and click remove, the assignment is gone from the modules, but it's still in the course. I haven't deleted it from the course. I just removed it from the modules. Now, the reason why I say keep these things hidden is this is one of the things that we've talked about with make it simple for your students to navigate your course keep everything on your modules area and that and you can you know how you set up your module area is going to vary from instructor to instructor i always set mine up based by week module one module two module three and then I have my, I want my students to go through the materials in that specific order. Um, generally, you know, I also think I'm, I'm also a former history teacher. And so like the way I always planned it out is, yep, they go through it. I want them to do the introduction first and do the next assignment and do the next, uh, do the next reading or something like that. So if I add this assignment back, one of the nice things is as a student, if I jump into here, if I jump into module one introduction, you'll notice I have this next and previous, they can click next and it goes to the next thing in the module. Right, I think what you're explaining is, is exactly why I'm confused about a piece you're not talking about now, but you talked about before, 
which is you showed us there's a calendar and there's a list of stuff for the students to do, which seems to be in direct violation of what you just, yeah, th this stuff. So I guess I'm not understanding why this is here when we've said hide assignments for, from students. So the calendar and the course summary is here so that students can see, hey, this is when I have things due. If you don't want to have that shown, you can click uncheck this box, show course summary. And so the summary and the dates aren't there, but the calendaring there and the course summary is more for students so that they can see when things are due. It's a quick glance of, hey, I have assignments due on those days. Okay, but we can hide it. But you can hide it, absolutely. Other questions? I think the confusion here is probably when students see the word syllabus, they would assume that's where they would go to access syllabus and course summary does not necessarily resonate under that syllabus section. Yep. Um, so that could be confusing. So uh, I don't have a question, but more of a confirmation. Um, did you mention that Zoom is now integrated with Canvas? Yes, it is okay. integrated with Canvas. Right. I'm only asking this because I've had other section, session, you know, workshop with you where you mentioned that Zoom has not been integrated with Canvas, but now it is. If we just got the we just got the integration up and running uh, this week. Great. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so the only thing that shows up in the syllabus calendar are items that are associated with the date. Uh, the modules are a different way to view the structure of the course. So that's partially true. You can assignments that don't have dates will actually still show up in the course summary. They just listed at the bottom. Uh, the campus syllabus has always been confusing. Yeah, that's one of the things that they got rid of. That's why they implemented the show uh, the toggle for the course summary because um, when Canvas first came out, you couldn't toggle this away. Um, all right, so we've talked about, so it seems that to be sentiments, the only things that are important are things that are graded pedagogically problem, problematic. Um, there's some there's some items you can add to the dude list um, that don't are that aren't graded um, with discussions. You can add a discussion to the do list to the to do list or the summary. But yes, generally, um, it's more influential of the course summary is more influential with what is being submitted. Um, that way, like I like we talked about, if you want to get rid of that, you can uncheck the course summary. Um, so that students don't see it and really emphasize the module and, you know, utilizing the modules. All right. So let's go ahead. We're not going to go into a dive in quizzes today because we're still working out some details on that, but we can talk about discussion. Actually, we'll, we'll glance over quizzes a little bit. Um, Discussions are similar to forums in Moodle. If I wanna do a new discussion, so actually let's do it the way I would recommend. I hit the plus sign for my module and add a discussion. And I click new topic and I would say module one discussion. Um, and so Amy, I'm gonna, I'll circle back to your question here in a little bit. So if I click into my discussion, I can click edit and put my prompt here. So I can say, please introduce yourself to your classmates. Um, generally, I recommend clicking the allowed thread of replies. That is, That makes it so discussions uh, function kind of how you're used to where the reply will be indented. If you want to um, make it a graded forum, you can do the graded. Um, you can also, um, if it's not graded, add to the student to do so they know they have it appears on their to do list. And then you can allow liking if you want your um, students to be able to like comments. And the other thing is that 
users must post before seeing a reply. So if you're having them, you know, formulate a thought and you want them to post before you see they you want them to be able to post before they can comment on anybody else, you'll use this feature. So they first have to post and then they can see other people's posts and then do uh, replies. So then if I scroll down, I can say, you know, this is available from and available until, so they only have a certain time to do it. Otherwise, if it's graded, I can set up a assign to and a date when it's due. I'm not gonna necessarily do that today, but let's add it to the to-do list and say, I want you guys to do this by Saturday. So then I can click save and publish. And so now I would have your general form. Please introduce yourself to your classmates. You can click reply and your post would be there. So then I can click on post, post my reply and you can see my discussion. Any questions? Jason, uh, this question, um, obviously for you, you your concentration of a class or a course modules per week, so sequential. Can you also use modules as categories? Absolutely. For like, example, like just like a PowerPoint presentation is collected into one module or readings, you know, or. Yep. So if I had something like that, I can do readings. I call it readings. I can click my plus sign and I want to add a file. I don't have a file here, so. I'm going to, you know, I don't have any files in this course. So I'm going to choose a file and I want to choose a document. So let's go to my docs. Yep, let's go with that. And I can click add item and my file is stored in that section there. So, and you can do that with PowerPoints or things. One thing, one limit that you do have for files that you upload to the course you only have one gigabyte of storage in your course. Uh, no, Robin, I cannot explain the health benefits to you, okay? I'm not that much of an adult. I barely understand it myself. Um, so you have one gigabyte of storage, meaning we don't, you cannot upload a whole ton of videos or things like that. We don't have Kaltura set up yet, but Kaltura will be set up in Canvas and that is where you need to store your videos. So that, you know, you have one yeah. gig of storage and that's it. Thanks, Jason. That was my next question about Kaltura because we do use a lot for some of our classes. So yep. We are working on it. We haven't got the um, integration in set up, but it's literally on to-do list to get it, uh, to get the Altai integration set up. So Jason, just to follow up on that, does that mean that the size of your Kaltura videos would count towards that one nope. gigabyte limit or no? Nope. If it's in Kaltura, it's stored someplace else. Awesome. Way to hide it. Um, follow up. Can we still add links? Like hyperlinks? Absolutely. As a line item? Okay. Thanks. So if I click on the plus sign and do external URL, I can put that in there and I can say sports. And I'm going to say load a new tab. And so it actually load, you know, goes to if I would have put it in right. But yes, you can do external <laughs> okay. URLs. Great, thanks. Yep. Um, the other thing you can do within your modules is you'll notice there's this text header here. Um, and so I one of the things you can do is to give, you, give your module some visual hierarchy is add your text headers and then indent things below it. So I can say text header and I'm gonna say submit. So then like that. So I have some sort of visual hierarchy um, to my course. So, yep, you need to read these things and actually this should go and submit because it's an assignment. So I can just drag it down underneath and that's how you can rearrange things within your modules or your entire modules if I wanted my readings before. Was that organized stuff? <laughs> yes. Um, all right, let's talk about quizzes. So if I go to my 
quizzes. I'm going to add a new quiz. And you're going to see this right now. Canvas is retiring what they call classic quizzes and moving to what they call new quizzes. And PSU will be going directly to new quizzes. So I can give my quiz a name. Um, and same thing as before, due dates and everything like that. And I can click save. And I go into my quiz build, uh, quiz builder. And I should have called it module one quiz. I can add instructions if I want to, or if I click on the plus sign, these are the different questions I have, categorization, file upload, formula, so on and so forth, um, multiple answers. So if you have multiple, cho uh, multiple choice that has multiple answers. So let's start off with that one. I can say multiple answer. I can say presidents for my title of it. And I can say which of the following were US presidents. Everybody really wants to know if they can bring their Moodle uh, question banks over into Canvas. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid that right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll say Thomas Jefferson for my correct answers. And then I can do Ben Franklin and Alexander Hamilton. Um, I can shuffle my choices and then my options, especially with this one, if they, you know, they can get partial credit if they get some of them or exact match and they have to get all of them uh, correct. So the question that is coming over is, will you be able to import questions from Moodle into Canvas? We're still working on that. Um, we're running into problems with Canvas and their new implementation of new quizzes. Um, and we're trying to see what what's going to happen with the autom automation of importing courses because um, with our contract we can in, we're going to be importing um, courses going back to spring of 2018 automatically into Canvas. Um, and we're still working on how the question banks get imported and whether they get imported into classic quizzes, which like I said, Canvas is, is sunsetting and new quizzes, which um, is gonna be their quizzing feature going forward. So to answer your question, it's TBD. So I have my quiz here. I can add any other questions. Um, be it fill in the blank, hotspot, numeric, true, false, or any one of these other things. Um, so if I click return, I need to add my quiz to my module. So I can click the plus sign here and go to quiz. Whoops. and it goes to my quizzes. And actually that's something that's different that we have to continue working on. So um, other questions. Uh, Jason, um, again, can we easily add people to our um, Canvas page? Let's say we want to add a teaching assistant. Is that still a lot of the challenging to modify on the composition of a group? So adding people to courses will still be done with the current process that we have in place. So if you have a TA, um, you would submit a help, uh, submit a ticket to the help desk and the TA can be added. If you have a graduate assistant, um, you would submit, you would um, submit, uh, email the Office of Academic Affairs and then they would uh, contact the IT department to get the graduate assistant added. All right, any other questions? All right, 
Now, one of the things you'll notice over here on your on Canvas, the entire navigation, um, the nice thing you have is a calendar here. And like I've talked about, uh, I was in court six. So you can see, hey, look, these are the things that I have that I have going on um, in that course, whether I'm a student or an instructor. In this case, I'm an instructor in my mod in this course six. And I realize, oh, I have two things due on this on back to back. I don't want them like that. I can click and drag from here and change that. And it's going to change the due date within that assignment in my course. So if I go back to my course here, which was this one right here, and I go back to that discussion, you can see it is now due on December 8th, when it was previously it was due on December 5th. Um, the other reason that we talk about uh, when you import your content. So I want to copy a Canvas course. When you select, when you copy, you can adjust events and due dates. So if I'm copying from the fall into the spring, I would copy my course from Canvas and then say, oh, I started on um, September, August 17th. And my new start date is January 25th. And my old end date was November, actually normally it's December 4th. And my new end date is in May 7th. And it will do its best to change the due dates from one uh, from reflecting in the fall to reflective in the spring. And so that's one of the reasons why we generally encourage you to not name things by January 25th to whatever, just give it general names because the due dates can function almost automatically with the adjustment in there. So I, I think I'm going back to the previous discussion about what shows up in the calendar. So is there a way to have everything from the course show up in the calendar? Like I, I would, I don't want to send the message to students that just jump to the assignments that are due and do those, right? So I would want to be able to include like the readings or videos I want them to watch or, or whatever. So can you, so, can you do that? Yep. So uh, you would function stuff like that on the pages. And so like any of your readings or any of your, um, your videos and stuff like that, you would put it in a page. And then you can see add to student to do, and I can put in a calendar here. So I click on save. And so it has to do December 4th. So it has it a to do for that page. But then does it show up in that overall calendar that you, yep. you were showing us? Excellent. So okay. if I go to my syllabus within this course, you can see I have my module one introduction, which is due, which is December 4th. Jason, I have a follow-up question, but it's like inversely related to what Kathy was saying. So if we import everything, sometimes, you know, if we want to adapt based on the pace of the class and whatnot, those dates, we don't want to reveal them ahead of time. Is there a way when you import um, I think I saw that you can like remove all due dates, but can you do that for everything you're doing, right? So it doesn't all populate at once. You can remove dates. Okay. Yes. So I can remove dates. So it all comes in and then you can change, then you can then go in and put the due dates for the items that you want. Can you also choose, oh, I saw it. Go back one. Sorry, I think it was there. It was like select specific content. Can you, and this goes back to our earlier question, you can't hide content once it's imported. There's no like hide. So if I have like a- Yeah, you, you can know, hide content. Oh, you can. Oh, yeah. I thought earlier that's we said with, we couldn't do it. That's with okay. the publish. So oh, that's what publish publishing versus does. Visual. Okay. Right on. Never mind. Thank yep. you. <laughs> yep. So if you import everything, you can publish it or unpublish it. So if I click the unpublish for this module, Nothing is nothing in this module is visible to students. And then like we talked about before, if I go to edit this and click on the lock, 
I can lock until December 4th. And so if I go to my student view, so you can see my students, they can, you know, will unlock on December 4th, they can see it and they can, but they can't access anything within it. Other questions? I don't have another question, but I just want to make an observation that it's remarkable to me that this tool has all this flexibility built into how you can design your courses, but the gradebook is set up on points. Like I just, that, that notion that somehow numbers have to be at the core of a s evaluation of students I, I don't know, it's just, it, it, it's kind of, it, it's bizarre to me. Yeah, and you know, that's, I will say that's something that's um, Canvas's, Canvas is more geared toward, initially was more geared towards K-12. And so a lot of times it's by, by points. Um, and unfortunately there's no way to change that Can I ask you for a recommendation? Earlier, you were talking about how the files can hold very minimal number. Can you recommend a different way if we have a lot of documents that student has to access, but it's not, there's not enough space in Canvas to hold all of the files? Um, so, if it's files, like if it's like words or PDF, Word or PDF documents, you, you should be fine. One gigabyte should hold it just fine. Um, but the the other workaround for that is to use the Office 365 link and have those documents in your in your OneDrive. So to give you an idea, whoops, I opened up my page right here. I have. Microsoft Office 365 with links to my OneDrive. And so I want them to read um, a document. Um, let's see, I want them to read this document here. And it puts a link to that document. And so then they would be able to click it and actually read that document. as it takes a minute to launch. There we go. So you would be able to see that, you know, your students would be able to access that document um, and it wouldn't take up space in your storage. Um, like I said, you know, if you're using just, you know, PDFs and, and Word documents, your store, your one gig of storage should be fine. The biggest concern was more of, you know, Instructors got in the habit of uploading videos to Moodle directly to the Moodle server and not using Kaltura. And that's where we recommend that you store your videos is in, is in Kaltura. Um, so the grade book, let's just put our pitchforks down. I can't change it. Um, but is your pretty standard grade book so I can, you know, give them the grade. And this was in my testing category. So that's the view, that is the category. Um, and then it gives them the total. So it's your pretty standard grade book. Um, one nice things it does, um, you can do automatically pre apply a percentage for missing submissions, um, apply deduction for late submissions. So if they submit something late, um, it automatically has a deduction. Um, if you're one of those teachers who who do uh, who does that, so but otherwise it's your pretty standard points based gradebook. That covers pretty much it. What other questions do you guys have? Jason, I have a question about when they submit their assignments. Yes. 
And, you know, like oftentimes if we can provide feedback in like a little text box or upload comments, how does that look here? Uh, it looks very similar. I'm sorry, I should have covered this. I've just, um, so if I click on, let me actually submit something as a student. Oh, darn it. Yep, I need to leave my student view and unlock it. So I'm going to submit something and I'm going to choose to submit. Oh, because I only did a docx. See? So then if I go to this as an instructor, I can go into what Canvas calls the speed grader. And normally it would render correctly. And then I would be able to mark up the document. I can do comments over here. I can actually record a media comment. Um, so if I click on that, I can allow it to use my camera and record a media comment into it. That's amazing. So we don't have to link it to Kaltura anymore? Nope, you can do oh. it right within here. That's kind it, of exciting. It doesn't do a screencast though. Oh, okay. So, so it's okay. It's only an audio or a webcam capture. And then also, did I hear you right? Did you say that you could mark up the doc, like mark up? Yes. Let me. You reach could do like track changes. Can't, or I think Canvas notes. grading it's, is going to blow some people's minds. It's okay. so it's not like a it's not like a track change. It's like a it's like you're editing you're you're writing over a PDF. So let yep. me get back in my student view and actually do a document that can that renders correctly. I don't know why that one. So you could do like I'm, bubble comments. Yes. So let me get a easier. So then I go into speed grader. There we go. Um, so then I can, you know, you can see I have my editing comments here. I can highlight something and then say, this doesn't make sense. Um, I can do a strike through. I can write directly on it. Um, I can do a point reflection and say, should have single space and things like that. So that's how you can um, mark it. That's how you can mark things up. Um, so so can, you, can you also link to a Kaltura? Because like I do a lot of screencasts in my grading. Um, can you do that? Can you link to a video or is that? So what you would need to do for something like that is uh, make the screencast and then put the link to the video in, in the comments here. So you get the link through Kaltura instead yes. of importing it? OK. Yes. OK. And Amy, if you want to reach out to me, I can talk to you how you can do that. Awesome. Um, Speed Grader is pretty cool. Um, and yes, it is very, uh, that is one thing I'm very excited about as we transition to the Canvas. Canvas all around is very mobile friendly. Um, I taken courses as a student on Canvas. I when I taught on Canvas, um, I've known students who, I taught high school using Canvas and I know students who did 50% of the work on their cell phone. Um, the other benefit is I was commuting on the light rail in Arizona and I would use my phone and do grading on my phone using the Canvas app and get a quarter of my work done. So it, Canvas is a very mobile friendly um, LMS.
other questions? Jason, last question for me. I understand that this could be operational in the spring. So if you want to um, be part of a pilot in the spring, you can do that. Okay. Um, if not, it's going to be the fall for sure. Right? It is mandatory in the fall, yes. So my question is, um, um, do we have a plan to train the students, like you say a junior or senior students who still have to take classes with us next year? And do we have a plan to train students with Canvas or all of us, each teacher has to become you know, the instructor or the teacher for, uh, for this new uh, software? Um, there's no plan to offer specific trainings to students. Um, we'll put in materials. We will have materials that instructors can put in the beginning of their course to give, uh, get students familiar with Canvas. Um, but there's not any plan to offer workshops for this is how you use Canvas students. Um, I will say when I've done this transition in the past for other, for other institutions, that is pretty standard that you generally don't do the training for students. A lot of students have, are familiar with it, they've used it, and it's pretty easy to, um, to get started. The other thing is Canvas has a really good documentation. Uh, here's their Canvas, Canvas student guide. Um, and I can put links for these things in here. If any of you guys are interested in doing a fall pilot, uh, the spring pilot, I just put a link into the um, into the chat where you can uh, submit a ticket to and just put in want to be part of the spring pilot and we'll put you on our list of our instructors. Otherwise, um, the instructor guides that Canvas has put together, I'm putting in the chat now that you guys can peruse to take a look at it. And another thing we could do, um, so you know we'll have more of these sessions during January Jamboree, and then I'm sure teaching and learning technologies will have additional um, drop-in hours. You can always make appointments with these guys. But um, you could also maybe follow up with Martha faculty if you decided that a little introduction to Canvas for your students would be helpful because that's the kind of thing that Martha could work on with our um, docs. These are digital and online consultants who work in the collab, and they could probably put together a really nice 15 minute, we come into your class digitally and give you a studentized, uh, a student eye view. So if you teach something like TWP or other introductory courses where students will be newer to all the environments, um, of course, as Jason's pointing out, um, a lot of K-12 will already know this. So even you, so in some ways your first year students may, may be the best at this compared to the Moodle users um, you know, who are the upperclassmen, but we can offer some support like that in the collab if you're interested, just talk to Martha and so we can see what we can whip up for you. Even with the upper classes, like when we transitioned from Blackboard to Canvas at Arizona State, we didn't offer student, student workshops and we didn't have I won't say we didn't have any complaints, but we did not have complaints where it rose to the level where like, hey, should we have done? It, it wasn't an issue at all for the students to adjust to the uh, to the system. Thanks, Jason. This is reassuring. I was just afraid to have the situation in my class where I have to be the blind leading the blind. Well, you, well okay. One, you're not the blind leading the blind. Shoot me an email or shoot a help ticket. I'm here on campus to help you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, the January Jamboree schedule will be out in a week or so. That's the 13th and the 14th. Um, there are two hour-long um, introductory Canvas sessions along, as, uh, along with a whole bunch of other um, tech support stuff and, and teaching and learning stuff. So um, at this point, I am going to stop the recording.